Welcome back everyone, today we are going to be making some Mercury 2 iodides. It's actually pretty useless on its own, but we are making it because of its vibrant red color. For this experiment only three chemicals are needed. 8.3 grams of potassium iodide, 6.8 grams of mercuric chloride, which represents a small axis, and distilled water to act as a solvent. Mercury 2 chloride, which you can see on the left, is a highly toxic mercury salt, and potassium iodide is also a white powder, but it's not as toxic as mercury chloride. In order to begin with the actual experiments, about 100 milliliters of distilled water were added to this large beaker. Afterwards, the mercuric chloride was dumped in. I ended up adding about 100 additional milliliters of distilled water because mercury chloride is only poorly soluble in water. Even with stirring, it took about an entire hour until all of the mercury chloride had finally dissolved. While waiting for the mercury chloride to dissolve, the potassium iodide solution was already being prepared. The potassium iodide was added to a beaker, followed by some distilled water. The exact amount doesn't matter, all of the potassium iodide must simply dissolve. Potassium iodide is highly soluble in water. You can see here, the beaker is being swelled around only a few times and it fully dissolved. Once the mercury chloride had finally dissolved, it was time for the fun part. We simply have to combine the solutions. As you can see, a red precipitate of mercury 2 iodide immediately crashes out. The reaction taking place is known as a double replacement reaction. Mercury 2 chloride reacts with potassium iodide to form mercury 2 iodide and potassium chloride. After adding the potassium iodide, stirring was continued for 10 more minutes. This ensures a complete reaction between the mercury chloride and the potassium iodide and it also makes particles clump together to make thicker ones. Bigger particles have a more vibrant color, they crash out of solution more easily which means that you can decant off the water and it's also easier to perform a vacuum filtration because the particles won't get through the filter as easily. Mercury 2 iodide is poorly soluble in water yet a small amount of it will still dissolve therefore the waste must be disposed of properly. In general, all mercury containing waste should not be put down the drain and not anywhere else into the environment. You have to dispose of it properly. I am going to recover the mercury from it someday and the rest of the mercury containing waste is going to go to a waste facility. Most of the water was decanted off and afterwards a vacuum filtration was performed. By using one of these squirt bottles, I made sure to get all of the mercury iodide out of the beaker. After the vacuum filtration, the mercury 2 iodide, which was still wet, was placed into a vacuum desiccator over an hydrous calcium chloride. Drying in a vacuum desiccator is significantly faster than air drying. Besides that, there's a nice benefit. You won't get any dust into your product. Once the powder had been dried for an entire day, we were left with this beautiful orange powder. In order to avoid in having any dust, the powder was transferred to a pre-weight storage container under a few mud. The storage container has been pre-weighed in order to be able to determine the yield without having to contaminate any further equipment. In the end, we were left with 10.5 grams of mercury 2 iodide. This corresponds to yields of around 92.4%. A very small amount of mercury 2 iodide was lost because it stayed in solution, but most of it just made it past the filter during an accident and I decided not to recover it. If you liked today's video make sure to drop me a like, if you don't want to miss out on further chemistry content like that, make sure to subscribe and if you really like my content, make sure to check out my Patreon, the link is in the description. As always, I have to thank all of my Patreons because you guys make it possible to film even more expensive projects. If you want to become a Patreon too, you will get access to a fennel acetyl series where I make fennel acetic acid in every known way. Up to now I only have one video of me making fennel acetic acid from sodium fennel acetate, but this is soon going to change. Anyways, I wish all of you a great day, until next time.